Okay, so a few months ago, Esteban, one of the hosts of the show, said something that took me totally by surprise. Which was we have a, a friend of ours who's Norwegian, thus known as La Noruega, mm-hmm. who's the only foreigner who speaks Argentinian sign language. What? Which is also a language, too, you know? <laughs> and then that awkward that- giggle was me covering up the fact that I didn't know an Argentine sign language even existed, which got me thinking, how many more of them are out there? Are deaf people not all using sort of a universal sign language? No. <laughs> this is Aiden. Aiden Kallasta from Oslo, Norway. Also known as the famous Noruega, who it turns out speaks two sign languages. Argentine sign language and American sign language. She works in international development with a focus on deaf education. And she introduced me to Johanna Katz, who was born deaf here in Buenos Aires. Johanna. <laughs> Johanna speaks four sign languages. ASL, American Sign Language, Argentine Sign Language, Israeli Sign Language, and then Lesco, which is Costa Rican Sign Language. By the way, for the purpose of this interview, we used an interpreter. So the voice you're hearing to represent Johanna is actually Andrea. Thanks, Andrea. So where did all of these different sign languages come from? In most communities where there are some sort of conglomeration of deaf people, a sign language will develop because it is sort of the natural language for deaf people and an easy way to communicate. When a sign language develops naturally, Johanna says it's very informed by the local culture of that place. That culture can literally be visible in the signs for certain things. For example, the sign for coffee in Argentina. This is a sign. She holds a tiny invisible cup to her mouth and takes a sip. Because here we mainly drink cortado. Ah, this is the typical Argentine coffee, a small espresso. In the United States, they have coffee makers or they grind their own coffee. Now she's got one fist on top of the other, kind of grinding together in opposite directions. So even something as simple as coffee, the culture of drinking coffee can be different in different countries. And that's reflected in the sign language. And these cultural differences run deeper than just vocabulary. In Asian sign languages, for example... If you want to say something about the past, you make a forward motion. And the future? You make a motion towards the back of your body. This grammar, Aiden says, is the exact opposite to Western languages. The future is ahead of you, the past behind. The Asian concept here is that you make a movement backwards because you can't see the future, you don't know what's there. While the past should be in front of you and because it's something you can see because it's already happened. Okay, but simplifying a little, even things like spelling the alphabet can be telling. American style, practical and economical. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta. You only use your right hand and the movements are all in the same place. Just keep your hands steady, basically. With Argentine? Some letters are just in your hand, but others are on your face or in your body. Actually, Argentine signs in general involve quite a bit more touching of the body. But that's like a big difference. Another very Argentine trait? Mouthing? 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 Okay, this means Argentines mouth an associated word in Spanish at the same time that they sign something. But just because Argentines connect spoken and sign doesn't mean that sign language is just Spanish or English on the hands. It's different. Each country has its own sign language. For instance, in Britain, in the United States, they speak the same language. The sign languages are different. Completely different. Completely different. But for all this linguistic diversity, there is an important commonality. Deaf people develop a visual communication in a totally different way than hearing people do. They are used to finding a way to communicate with everyone, not just other deaf people. So where hearing people might struggle with language barriers, the deaf cruise right past them. It is an awesome phenomenon that only happens to deaf people. They are better at it than hearing people are. They always find a way. If I meet someone new, and one of us doesn't understand the other, it just incites both of us to gesture even more. And I end up learning how they sign for certain words. I love it, it's really fun. And that unique ability to find a way, that creates a culture. We don't see ourselves as having a disability. We see ourselves as a linguistic community. A community where the connection like the language, is natural too. Big thanks to Ivan Kalistad, Johanna Katz, and Andrea Moreno for all your help producing this story. For the typical mistake, in Buenos Aires, Argentina, I'm Jacqueline Van Meter.